Okay, so by a quick show of hands, how many of you here does not know how to swim? All right, thank you. Well, just a few years ago, I was in the exact same position as you all. I didn't know how to swim either. Hopefully, the story today inspires you to go out and do what feels like the impossible. Because my message is about facing fears and exploring more. And to that, I wanted to share a personal message with you, a personal story with you. And it all started in the seventh grade, when I joined the swim team without knowing how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> and here's how the story goes. I'm in my last bucket class, and as usual, the afternoon announcement comes on. Bus riders, car riders, walkers are being released. But one particular message stood out that day, and it was for swim team trials. And it went something like this. Swim team trials are starting out next week. For further information, please meet in the dance room. And do not join the swim team if you do not know how to swim. We are not here to teach you how to swim. <laughs> and that's when my math teacher looked up and asked if anyone was interested in joining the swim team. And several students raised their hands, including me. Yours truly. <laughs> now honestly, I didn't want to join the swim team. I just wanted to get out of class. And I raised my hand for anything, just to roam the halls for a little bit. So I took my sweet time getting through that meeting. But once I was there, I picked up a sign-up form to make it more believable that I was there for swim team trials. And once it was over, I began walking home. And as I was walking, it got me thinking, you know, I actually want to join the swim team. And then that got me thinking, wait, why did I want to join the swim team? I don't even know how to swim. So I got home and I began pacing back and forth. And I came up with three convincing reasons why I want to join the swim team. One, I might be crazy. <laughs> Two, I'm probably crazy. <laughs> and three, the cute girl in my science class was joining the swim team. And I'm not going to lie, seventh grade me wanted to see her in a bathing suit. <laughs> we'll call her Mindy. Now, I know what you're thinking, but I can explain. It's middle school, hormones are kicking in. And let's be honest, your crush can make you do some crazy things, no matter what age, <laughs> including joining a swim team without knowing how to swim. But the problem is still there. I still don't know how to swim. And trust me, I tried learning how to swim. But no matter what I did, my body just sinks. It's like I wasn't cut out for swimming. And it always terrifies me not being able to reach the floor. It's like the minute I lose my footing was the minute I lose all control in the water. So I had to come up with a plan to essentially survive swim team trials for just one day. But not very many ideas came to mind. And the ones that did would not <coughs> guarantee success. And for example, I could hug the wall the entire time. And in case anything happened, I could just pull myself up to safety. But what if coach threw me in the middle lane? Well, in that situation, I do know how to doggy paddle. But I can only do that for about 30 to 45 seconds before being completely exhausted. And I'm pretty sure tryouts last longer than 45 seconds. The most plausible plan was to take one of those animal balloons and tape them around my thigh, under my swim trunk. <laughs> but even that was too risky. What if it was sticking out? How would I explain that to coach? <laughs> so without a plan, I wasn't sure if I could survive swim team trials. But as days go by, my seventh grade brain comes up with an ingenious plan. Now, I'm not sure I was watching Animal Planet that night, but I call this tactic whaling. <laughs> so what is whaling? <laughs> Basically, instead of being afraid to sink, I would embrace it. My body already sinks regardless. Why not take advantage of it? So the idea was to take a big gulp of air, assuming that the pool is four to eight feet deep, sink down to the bottom and just hop. And only when I needed air, I would push <laughs> off the floor, break surface like a whale, take another big gas bear before sinking back down and repeating the process. <laughs> now I'm thinking, Michael, you're a genius. This plan does not require walls, doggy paddling, or balloons. It was 100% guaranteed to work. So with sheer confidence that day, I got on the bus headed to tryouts. And once at the aquatic center, my coach, Coach Fleen, tells everyone to get changed and head to the pool. Super excited to see Mindy and show her my welling technique. I got changed and went to look for you know who. But that was the problem. I was so focused on Mindy that day that I failed to realize the situation I was in. Now, two other schools were also holding swim team trials, and they took up all the practice lanes. Not a big deal. But that meant my first trial began on the 12-foot side of the pool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> my mind went blank, and thoughts of regret started to fill my mind. I told you not to do this. This was a bad idea. You should have brought that balloon. And whaling was not going to work here. I'm a five-foot Asian boy and probably drowned before reaching halfway. <laughs> so during the warm-up stretches, my brain was freaking out, working over 200%, trying to come up with anything to survive the situation. I kept thinking and thinking, and in the end, 
I came up with nothing. The gig was up, and it was getting too dangerous, and I had to go tell Coach Fleen the truth. So I walked with Coach Fleen, and before I said anything, I choked, and I ended up asking, what are we doing today? <laughs> Understand this, I dug myself way too deep, 12 foot deep to be exact. It was a lose-lose situation. If I had told the truth, there was no doubt in my mind I would be in big trouble. The announcements clearly said, do not join the swim team if you do not know how to swim. And look at me, I'm not swim team trial. And if I didn't say anything, well, I would most likely drown in that pool. But most likely doesn't mean definitely. So I took my chances. <laughs> While everybody was cannonballing into the pool, I was that one kid who walked to the edge, sat down, and slowly scooched himself into the water, <laughs> hugging the wall the entire time. And let me tell you, I was terrified. But once in the water, we began practice with freestyle. And the only thing I knew was doggy paddle. So I let a couple of my friends go ahead of me, and I just copied their strokes. But copying someone's stroke and kicking your legs doesn't automatically mean you can swim. So after three to five stroke, I begin to sink and instinctively grab onto the lane dividers to pull myself up. And this happened several times. And coaches catching on to students hanging on the lane dividers. So I didn't know what to do. And then I thought about it. I had to play it cool. One hand, I used to fake the stroke, so this is how I did it. And the other hand was underwater, pulling myself across the pool. <laughs> it looks better in the water, trust me. And surprisingly, this actually worked. Until we had to switch stroke <laughs> to the backstroke. Now, at this point, it's game over. I couldn't even swim fours correctly. Now, coach wants me to do this backward. But I got this far. Uh, I'm not turning back now. And I got what I came for. I would drown a happy boy. So I got into position, and I still remember pushing off the wall, kicking as hard as I can to open my eyes and see the light. Not the heaven, but the lights on the ceiling. I realized something that I would have never known about myself if I never took the chance and faced my fears. That day, I realized I could float on my back this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and I still remember my coach telling me, Michael, I think we just found your stroke. So I was a natural backstroker. So I faced my fears, and I learned how to do the backstroke. But facing your fears is only one part of the message. The other part was to explore more. And that's something we all need to do more of. I didn't stay where I was comfortable. I didn't do backstroke for the rest of the tryout. Instead, I took this newly found property by myself, and I went back to explore the other strokes. So I went back, and I took on freestyle once again, but this time with the goal to not use the lane dividers. And whenever I began to sink, I would just slip on my back and back to the surface. <laughs> And I continue to do this for both breath and fly. And here's the thing. That year, I made it onto the swim team. That's me. <laughs> I came to trials not knowing how to swim, and I ended my season knowing all four strokes. I even came back from my eighth grade year. I swim in the 50 back, 50 free, free relay, medley relay, and even the individual medley, where a swimmer must perform all four strokes in a specific order. And in that race, I ended second. Uh-huh. Get that laugh. Now, I said I learned all four strokes. I never said I was any good. <laughs> and that year, I did drown in participation awards. But it was a great experience. And that's why I want to encourage you all to go out and face your fears. And if you can't find a reason to, go out there and find yourself a Mindy, or even a Michael. I'm single. That's someone or something that drives you further. Because that day at tryout has allowed me to venture into a whole new part of the world that I've always feared to explore. I've been able to jump off cliffs into huge lakes, dive in the ocean to catch starfish, crabs, and other sea creatures, and get out of Six Flags Whitewater's lazy river and explore the parks without being so afraid to drown. The world is our park, and every time we overcome our fears, a whole new area is unlocked. Oh, and uh, today, I'm proud to say I unlocked a whole new area in my life. My biggest fear today is public speaking. <laughs> yeah, public speaking. Yeah, here I am today speaking on TEDx. The world has so much to offer, and the only thing holding you back is yourself. And if you're wondering about Mindy, did I ever get to date the girl that put me through the situation in the first place? <laughs> the answer is, yeah, we did. And that was probably the best two hours of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys with a great quote from Judy Bloom. We all must confront our fears. How we handle our fears will determine where we go for the rest of our lives. To experience adventure or to be limited by the fear of it. The choice is yours. Thank you.